not a clear and cold Friday night from West Virginia's University City. The Mountaineers return to the 304 with a head coach who just picked up win 904 as West Virginia welcomes Eastern Kentucky. Along with Warren Baker, my name's Eric Little. Thank you for having us in as part of your Thanksgiving weekend. And speaking of Thanksgiving, Mountaineer fans are thankful for, very thankful for a couple guys. They are. And uh, Taz Sherman, to begin with, I think he's the undisputed leader of this ball club. You know, Taz is the glue. And the one thing that I really like about Taz is that when things break down, he can create his own shot. And he's one of the few guys that can do that, but uh, he's going to have to be their leader all year. Reigning Big 12 Player of the Week, but he also had help from Sean McNair with a red-hot second half against Clemson Sunday. He really stepped up when West Virginia needed it both. You know, Sean's going to be steady. He doesn't get quite as many shots as I'd like to see him have, but I'll tell you what, he's a guy that's a gamer, and he likes to take the big shot. McNeil with 15 of West Virginia's last 23 points, all 15 points from Sean McNeil in the second half on Sunday. It'll be McNeil starting for West Virginia, along with Taz Sherman, Keith Johnson, Jalen Bridges, and Isaiah Cottrell for the Mountaineers. There's Sherman, the reigning Big 12 Player of the Week. Cottrell set to jump the opening tip against Jansen Williams of Eastern Kentucky. Officials of veteran crew Jerry Pollard, Kelly Self, and KB Burdett. Pollard tosses it in the air. Cottrell wins a dip for West Virginia, and away we go. Happy to have you with us on this Black Friday. Well, in Eastern Kentucky, will play a very, very aggressive man-to-man. -man. West Virginia will have to take care of the basketball. Sherman looks inside. He's got Bridges, and Bridges swatted right away. Jansen Williams with a deflection. Yeah, good set by the Mountaineers. Just a great play by Williams. The step back three from Kurt Lewis. Double-double in his last game in Eastern Kentucky, up 3-0. Eastern Kentucky will press the majority of the ball game. What Bob Huggins was telling us about earlier today, Bake, these are mean multiple different presses as McNeil misses his first look. Sherman gets it back in the paint, finds space, can't get that to fall. Cottrell creates another opportunity. Kick out from Bridges. And it's head second call. Remember, we have a Stop issue with Bridges. I think, yeah. Bridges got hit in the eye, I yeah, believe. Yeah, I think he the, got poked in the eye there. Yeah. Jerry couldn't, tell if he got, couldn't tell if he got hit in the bridge of the nose or under his eye. So Jerry Pollard stops things with 17 on the shot clock. Yeah, he seems to be okay. But again, we were talking about all the pressure from Eastern Kentucky. Bob Huggins uh, was concerned with all kinds of different presses from, from this Colonel's unit. Yeah, they will. They'll change it up quite a bit. The Mountaineers will have to be ready to adjust. Shot clock's at 10. McNeil in the corner looking for something underneath. It's not there. Now at five, Bridges is going to have to go. Step back, jumper off the iron, and again, Eastern Kentucky grabs the board. Their starters for Shark, Crookshank, Jansen Williams, Cooper Robb, Michael Moreno, and Kurt Lewis. Lewis has the only bucket of the game. Crookshank turns the edge. There's Jansen Williams, the Marshall transfer, and he makes this a 6 0 game. And Bake, this is an Eastern Kentucky team that can shoot the lights out, and so far, a couple threes. They most certainly can. Well, Jansen Williams has really played well. Speaking of shoot the lights out, McNeil can do it, but he misses there. Now Kupara back in transition. Lewis slips. Eastern Kentucky does well to maintain the possession. Nice pass from Cooper Rob. Here's Moreno and Michael Moreno, another guy that Bob Huggins was impressed with in the shoot around today, makes this 9 0 Eastern Kentucky. These guys love to shoot the three. West Virginia's got to get out on the shooters. Adrian Johnson breaking the pressure in the paint. And Johnson breaks the ice to West Virginia. What well, tough shot by Johnson. Got it to go down. Now West Virginia will come with some full court pressure. This is an Eastern Kentucky team that's hit 13 or more threes in five of their six games. Already three tonight. They lead it by seven. They have multiple guys that can hit from beyond the arc. That's what makes this team do. so dangerous. Williams, another one, and Williams with his second three of the night. How about this from Richmond, Kentucky? EKU up 12-2, two and a half minutes into the game. Boy, and they love that three ball, and all the guys have confidence. Sherman looking to create. And he hit the foul to go to the line to try to create the old-fashioned way. Boy, nice job by Taz Sherman to absorb the, the, the hit and still have the strength to get that ball up on the board. Another look at the Williams three. Again, the guy who transferred from Marshall, Jansen Williams, played against WVU a few years ago when these teams met at the NCAA tournament in San Diego. Capital Classic West. You've got to get out on Williams, and he's got great size, but he gets it off quickly, too, so you have to be up on him when he receives the ball. 
Taz Sherman will go to the stripe. 91% from the line this season for West Virginia. Needing some points to overcome a slow start. Three-point play completed. West Virginia struggled at the start of the first and second half against Clemson on Sunday. So this is not strange territory for West Virginia. No, it is not. Rob trying to shake McNeil. He'll go to the rim, a little strong. McGinn Williams with a board to Lewis. Lewis can't connect. And Lewis will draw the flop warning, and that's a point of emphasis this year. He was hit as he tried the three, and it took exactly three minutes into the game to get a flop warning. Yeah, they said that they were going to make that a point of emphasis this year, try to keep guys from trying to uh, cheat the game and pick up a cheap foul. I know that's the case in the men's and the women's game. But imagine the men more risk for flopping than the women. Yeah. <laughs> Demont Kerrigan is in for West Virginia as Bob Huggins going to the bench early. Gabe Osaboyan is back, or it makes his first appearance rather. Yeah, Dayton Ker uh, Kerrigan has to come to meet the basketball. You can't stop and assume that they're not going to come behind you and knock the ball away. Get it to Osaboy and now McNeil still trying to find something and he connects from the short corner. Sean McNeil with another three for West Virginia, his 109th of the season or of his career. Eastern Kentucky can gamble if they want, but if they do, they better find Sean McNeil. Pressure coming on Rob from Osaboy and he gets it back. Moreno steps into one for the top of the arc and he doesn't get that to fall. Nice tip back from Kurt Lewis. Another poor box out by West Virginia. They have to get on the glass. Lead down to six for Eastern Kentucky. West Virginia, the saving grace for this team this year is how many times they turn teams over. Yep, and that, again, that'll have to be an emphasis tonight. Sherman from the blocks, double teamed, and McCall a foul. The officials discussing who that'll go against. That's Cooper Robb. That's his second personal. So two quick ones on Rob. And this is away from the play. Rob, a lot of harassment on Tash Sherman. Well, it started away from the play, and then Sherman got the ball, and Rob continued the harassment. We've seen West Virginia do more of posting up their smaller guys, especially Taz in the lane, along with Jalen Bridges. It's a drive from Johnson. Right-hand floater short. Lewis there. Just seems like Eastern Kentucky does a better job of putting themselves where they need to be than West Virginia is right now. There's a pass zipped by Braxton Beverly, and it'll be West Virginia ball when we come back. Timeout on the floor, Eastern There's Kentucky by six on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Yeah, Sean McNeil, and he can knock that down all day if you don't get in front of him. Welcome back to the Coliseum. So there are two things that Coach Huggins really wants to see from his team tonight. He wants to see them guard better, and he wants to see them rebound better. He does not like their effort or desire in either one of those categories so far this season. Put simply, he says he's not used to them playing like this. Through five games this year, this year he's been uh, his team has been out rebounded eight, 181 to 155. And it's going to be a battle on the board tonight, as we've already seen. EKU averages 40 rebounds per game. The Mountaineers, 31 per game. Eric. Thank you, Amanda Maisie. Welcome back to the WVU Coliseum. Kedrian Johnson inbound for West Virginia as the Mountaineers trail by seven. And that's an issue, as Amanda brings up earlier, that Hugs has had with this team all season long, rebounding and defending. Yes, that's, that's been a problem. You know, something that concerned most Mountaineer fans have been in the year is Tyler Sherman again does what he does so well when West Virginia needs the basket, but rebounding has been a big issue for West Virginia all year. How about DeMond Kerrigan slamming the door shut, but the ball That's finds its way in, even when West Virginia gets a body on a body. Boy, yeah. For EKU, they have to handle the pressure D by West Virginia, which they have done, and they need to control the big scores. You know, West Virginia's got three big scores in Bridges and McNeil and Sherman. They need to try to control two of those three. And West Virginia definitely uh, needs to find a three and a four to step up and go around McNeil and Sherman. McNeil and Sherman, the guys that are one and two among Big 12 players in minutes played. 
And West Virginia must guard the arc. They have got that. You can see what West, uh, Kentucky can do. Eastern Kentucky can do from the behind the arc. West Virginia got to do that, and they need to control Williams and Lewis on the boards. Johnson leaves one short. And there's Williams, so already a key to the game. It's yes. proving to be something West Virginia could improve upon. Williams gets at the top of the key. And there, there's the other one. You said, you said, rebounding and defending the arc. Yeah. In yeah. both, in both cases, Jansen Williams burns West Virginia. West Virginia in their transition defense has to find the shooters on the arc. Sherman in the blocks against Braxton Beverly outside. Johnson will look for three. This is wide. Osaboyan with a rebound and the putback falls for Gabe Osaboyan. Breath of fresh air off the bench, West Virginia, Big. Well, you know, you know that he's not going to get out work. You can count on that if you're a West Virginia fan. Kobe Johnson picks up the foul. Let's take a look at the last one. Off yeah. the miss, Osa Boyan creates, and this is what Bob Huggins has been talking about. Yeah, yeah. Desire is never going to be a question when it comes to Gabe Osa Boyan. The first time out, second chance points, 2 nothing in favor of Eastern Kentucky. Through four minutes, EKU had five from the field, four of them were threes. They've hit a fifth sense. Blanton pulls up, and off the bench, it is Devontae Blanton hitting from the right side. West Virginia's Trailing by nine. It's been a while since they've been down double figures, but they just cannot eat away at this at this deficit. No. And, and there's Blanton creating in midcourt. A tip to Beverly, and Beverly cruises in for the easy one. That 2-2-1 two, two, press that Eastern Kentucky is employing pays off for them. Found in front of the West Virginia bench. The thing about EKU is they may press and get beat seven or eight times they're not going to quit they have so much confidence in that press that they will continue to do it. good tip out from Devontae Blanton foul called on Jamaru Brown he'll come to the bench into the basket Tariq Balogun on for the first time for Eastern Kentucky if you're West Virginia you've got to come to meet the basketball strong Mountaineers have brought Malik Curry onto the floor, maybe looking for some ball handling. How about a Savoyan driving the lane, forcing one up short. And it'll be West Virginia basketball. Savoyan found the room on the lane and decided to take it, but Malik Curry is somebody that could provide some ball handling stability for West Virginia right now. Yeah, you know, Gabe, uh, Mountaineer fans have wanted to see more scoring out of Gabe. He did go the hole strong, but he's got to try to be able to finish that. Sherman double teamed. Launches, can't connect, but Osa Boyan works under the basket. Gabe doing work, getting buckets. Now Gabe does whatever the team needs. If it's taking a charge, yes. In this case, it's been offensive rebounding. Moreno's pass tipped. Blanton under the basket. There's Balogun, turnaround jumper. And a rebound for McNeil. Yeah, boy, they had number. They had the right person. McNeil giving up inches. Balogun just couldn't finish the shot. Good movement to Curry and a nice cut. Curry rewarded. He'll go to the free throw line after the bucket. Well, that's how you beat pressure. You know, Sherman saw that pressure. Curry went back door. That will loosen it up. See another look at the Osa Boyan bucket. That's just hard work. And a mismatch in size. Blanton 6'6. Six, six. Osa Boyan outworking him. And a nice finish on the other end from Malik Curry. Curry and Sherman on the same page. That's how you beat that, that pressure. Fake up, go back door. That'll loosen up that pressure some. Osa Boyan and Damon Kerrigan leave. Pauly Pauly cap on for West Virginia. Also coming on at that stoppage, Jalen Bridges. West Virginia in a little 2-2-1 as well. Both teams want a pressure. Three-point ace Braxton Beverly, a long career at NC State. Finds Devontae Blanton. Dumps it off into the basket. And Balogun knocked off the ball. Here comes Curry the other way. Can't connect with the jumper. Second chance from Polycap. Boy, Curry had Sean McNeil open. Curry splits the middle, finds a Bridges open in the corner, and Bridges can't connect. Oh, boy. JB won't get him any better looks than he got just now. Nice feed from Rashard. Cookshank under the basket. That's and Devontae Blanton has been doing work all game long. Makes this a 25 to 16 ball game. How's West Virginia handling the pressure? 
I find most of the time that the guys are in the right position. McNeil, he just keeps launching and nothing's been consistent yet for him. Polycap turned around, hook, and Polycap gets at the fall. Boy, a lot of contact there. That was a difficult shot that Polycap made. You know, West Virginia continues to stay in this game, not really getting outside themselves. No. Uh, Blanton for three. Too strong. West Virginia tipped out. They can make it a one possession game here. No, check that. They can make it four. McNeil drives. McNeil leaves it short. Blanton grabs the board. McNeil did everything but get it high enough on the board. Had a nice drive under control. Just didn't have enough on the shot. Crookshank working against Malay Curry. Some space. Mid range. Off the heel. Good block out by Polycap. Nice behind the back move from Curry. A spin, and he couldn't finish. What a foul. It didn't get that call. Yeah. In transition, Beverly steps into the three, and Braxton Beverly, three point ace at NC State, transfers here and has the bucket to make this a 10 point lead again. They had been having some issues, uh, health issues, but boy, he looked pretty good on that shot. In this last game against the University of Albany with a back issue. Bridges slings it. McNeil wide open. A little strong. He just keeps shooting and shooting. Well, he has to. Shooters do that. that. That's what, exactly what they do. Beverly drives against McNeil, and Beverly uses that high part of the window. Everything Eastern Kentucky is throwing up there. Going base. in. Wow. Lead is 12 for the Colonels. Bob Huggins sitting with his arms folded on the bench. Or he wants some action inside. Eastern Kentucky right now, one of the smart things they're doing, Taz Sherman's having the labor to get the ball up the floor, which may take away from his shooting. Curry with a nice shot. West Virginia really needed that answer. He had nine points off the bench against Clemson on Sunday. That was half of West Virginia's bench scoring. He figures to be somebody that has a key role in this team as a kick will bring us to a timeout. 30 to 20, Eastern Kentucky. Leading West Virginia. Mountaineers in danger of having the lights shot out of them at the building. Back on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Six threes for Eastern Kentucky in this game, and Warren Baker, they've been hitting them from all over and from all over the lineup. Well, that's the thing. You've got so many guys that can hit threes like that. When you've made 13 threes or more in five out of your six games, you've got a lot of guys with confidence, and you can see why they have that confidence the way they're shooting the ball right now. Getting exactly the kind of start that you need to get when you're coming on the road against a Power 5 opponent in West Virginia. Mountaineers come into this game fifth in the country in turnover margin. Right now, Eastern Kentucky's only turned it over once. West Virginia's got to find a way to create some takeaways. Yeah, you, you think so, yeah. West Virginia's turned it over twice. Eastern Kentucky once, which is kind of rare when you see teams putting as much pressure on the ball and pressing the, like, uh, the way they're doing. This is, we knew this was not the West Virginia press Virginia team of old, but still uh, they're going to have to do something against this Eastern Kentucky press to maybe soften the blow a little bit. Well, that, yeah, but the only thing about that, Eric, is that if, if they're not successful, then you've got to hurry up and try to find those shooters. There now good defense for Tedrian Johnson to force the five seconds on the veteran Braxton Beverly. Pretty hard guy to force a five second on, I would imagine. Yeah, good passer like he is, but West Virginia's defense, the other four guys doing a nice job. Best kind of turnover, the one with the clock stopped. The Kobe Johnson into the game for the first time, and Johnson well defended. West Virginia gets it across the timeline. Cottrell takes it to the hole and is fouled on his way up. That was a late whistle. And Jansen Williams didn't agree with it. It's not going to be Williams, excuse me. It's Michael Moreno that picks up the foul. Boy, you'd like to see Isaiah Cottrell finish that shot off. You know, big guy like that, he's got to be stronger inside. You know, that should be a three-point play opportunity here. West Virginia needs Cottrell to be that big that they lost last year with Culver not yes. heroes. And, um, West Virginia needs some scoring inside. They, they've really struggled to score inside, and when they have scored, it's not a lot of times. It's been the Taz Shermans or Jalen Bridges that have done it. 
And when that, you put Sherman inside, you're, you're taking opportunities away from him on the outside. Outside, right. But that'll help Sean McNeil so much if West Virginia could get and look at this play. Osaboyan works the rebound. West Virginia gets into the possession. Obi Johnson looking inside. We talked about Sherman. He's not on the floor here. It's Kobe Johnson. Gabe Osaboyan getting the touch there. Osaboyan goes up strong. It sits on the heel and falls. Gentle roll in from the heel, and Osaboy into the strike. And you have to love this guy. Whatever West Virginia needs, you know, if they said Gabe Osaboy had a great game, you'd say, well, he probably took five charges. Now, tonight, he's doing it on the offensive end. Whatever you need done, this guy will do it for you. Even took a three, a bit of a heat check against Clemson on Sunday. Yeah, I'm not so sure Hugs wants to see that all the time, but uh, <laughs> occasionally, you know, he reward the guy and let him take a three. Lewis flies in with the rebound up to miss. This leads trim down to seven for Eastern Kentucky. As slim as it's been in some time. Past the halfway point of the first half. Williams again from the corner. Too strong. Oh, he's human. We can miss one. West Virginia looking for a combination that could put some points on the board. And some defensive stops wouldn't hurt as well. There's Saboyan on the baseline. Finds help outside. There's Cottrell. And Cottrell can't get it to fall. And that's the one thing that Cottrell does do well is shoot the long-range shot. This will be on Kedrian Johnson. Kedrian yeah. Johnson has the first one. That's his second. Team foul number two. And Johnson looking on the video board. Yeah. He didn't think he did anything what, there. What did I do? And we'll see it here on our monitors. Wasn't much. Looks to be going for the ball. Again, West Virginia stand with the 2-2-1 two, two, press. Eastern Kentucky having some problems against this. Lewis under the basket. Moreno, the nice backdoor. That's what happens if you are not successful in stealing the ball. They are great at attacking. You surprised Eastern Kentucky's having some problems with it, given that they run it themselves? Yeah, well, you know what? There's all of that. His teams the press don't like to be pressed, so. Oh, so Boyan finds space and is hacked on his way in. I think they're calling it on the floor. I don't. I don't think he will. Here's the Eastern Kentucky bucket, Moreno. Again, you sell out to try to stop the, the ball early and you leave a guy open. Yeah. Isaiah Cottrell leaves. Paulie Paulie cap back on for West Virginia. Only one and one for Gabe. Already 18 fouls for Eastern Kentucky, so foul trouble could play a role here later on in this half. It's going to yeah. go back the other way. Now, Pauly Paul will cap over the back of Marino. A little too aggressive for West Virginia. So A.W. Hamilton a moment ago, the head coach of the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. Sean McNeil comes back on. Gabe Osaboy, and there's the aforementioned A.W. Hamilton. Played at Marshall, played West Virginia at Marshall, but of course those games were in Charleston. This is his first game in this building. Shark Cookshank crossing half court. Still a nine point edge for Eastern Kentucky. Coming up in the eight minute mark of this one, Cookshank drives the lane and it connected a whistle go and the ball goes the other way. Cookshank says it was deflection. The officials say not the case. Eastern Kentucky by nine from the Coliseum on Big 12 now at ESPN Plus. Welcome back to the WVU Coliseum. Gabo Saboyan getting work done tonight for West Virginia, Bake. Yes, he is on the offensive glass. He has three rebounds. All three have been on the offensive boards. And that's something West Virginia certainly needed. Been a bit of a utility man for West Virginia. Like you said, you name it, he can do it. He can do it. Eastern Kentucky shooting just under 60% from the field. They lead by nine. Coming up on seven and a half to play in our first half of the WVU Coliseum. Really good crowd on hand tonight on this Friday after Thanksgiving. We told some roads may have been issues because of the weather, but doesn't seem to have kept the folks away. So now some fouls going against Eastern Kentucky now. 
Williams. Jameson Williams. Williams picks up his second. Taz Sherman uh, playing the point for the most part, and he's been a facilitator. Williams got the hands, so the arms a little high on Polycap. Polycap to the stripe. Transfer from DePaul. Also played for Manhattan. Polycap creates a hitting there. We get a second opportunity. Polycap looked really good on that foul shot. Nice soft touch. Like to see that continue. Williams leaves the two fouls. Tariq Balligan back on for Eastern Kentucky. And Polycap hits the back half. West Virginia hanging in there in this game. It's rarely been larger than 10, that lead for Eastern Kentucky, but they've led throughout, and a timeout called by Eastern Kentucky. West Virginia's defense beginning to confuse EKU a little bit. West Virginia turning the heat up, yes. Double teaming guys in the ball area, overplaying, resulted in one turnover on Eastern Kentucky, and then uh, now a timeout. I mean, amazing. We well, you know Sunday, Coach Huggins picked up his 904th career win, making him the NCAA's fourth all-time most winningest coach. You know, a lot has changed, guys, since 1980 when he got his first head coaching job at Walsh University. Stamps were just 15 cents. A gallon of gas was a buck 25. But one thing that hasn't changed is Hugs' dire desire to compete. I asked him what he thought his secret to longevity is in his business, and he honestly just couldn't give me an answer but he told me of how he's had a basketball in his hand since he was able to walk, how his grandpa put up a basketball goal for him with the rim upside down. He just loves the game. It's all he's known. His dad was a coach and it is in his blood. He also told me he doesn't live his life looking back. So while many of us are reflecting on 904 wins, he's just worried about the next game and getting the win for his team and not himself. Eric. Thanks, Amanda. He may be one of the few people that still uses stamps in 2021. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what they cost. <laughs> they cost forever as far as I'm concerned. I'm an old guy. I still use stamps. <laughs> I need to mail some Christmas cards out myself because it is the season. Taz Sherman guarding Braxton Beverly. Nice help by Paula Cap. Meanwhile, the shot clock's down to 10. Eastern Kentucky's not really had a good look at the basket. Beverly steps back and creates one. They can't get that to go. Nice defensive series for West Virginia. Against a three-point shooting team, even when they step back and they take those early in the shot clock, they're going to hit a few, but they can't hit all night long. Toby Johnson tries to split two defenders. Finds help in a wide open Jalen Bridges. And Bridges couldn't finish, but Polycap under the basket. And West Virginia continuing to find ways to get to the free throw line. The yeah, boy JB would like to have that shot back. He won't get many more open looks like that. Polycap coming in, picking up exactly where Gabe Osaboyan left off, hitting that offensive glass. Bridges from Fairmont. I think the nearest defender was in Fairmont. <laughs> Polycap at the stripe. That was that was doomed from the start. That that did not look good yeah. off his hands. Somebody cut a fan on in the building or something that kind of blew that one. Kobe Johnson leaves. Jalen Bridges back on. In baseball, they call that the Ephus pitch. <laughs> call Amanda and ask her if she's seen an. Ask her, ask Randy if he's seen an Ephus pitch like that one. Well, that that free throw didn't look good, but I think Hugs will take that if Polycap stays on the boards the way he's been doing. And more often than not, they're going to look like that. He shakes his head. Happens to the best of them. Lesson for the kids at home. Six points, a lead for EKU. A stop here for West Virginia could make things interesting for the first time in a while, or at least make the score closer that's been in some time. Sherman, Sherman slamming the door shut on Beverly. Pass deflected around, and Bridges oh. just couldn't hang on. That ball went by three or four Mountaineers and just couldn't corral, uh, corral it. But West Virginia really turning the heat up on the defensive end. I think Polycap hit it first to McNeil, and then Bridges just couldn't hang on. Tough in their multiple deflections and switches <laughs> of direction. 12 on the shot clock. Beverly triggers the inbound for EKU. Almost throws it into the backcourt. Devontae Blanton gets it off to Brown. 
Wide open Kurt Lewis in the corner. Lewis at four on the shot clock. Finds the bank is open on this holiday weekend. How did he bank that from that angle? Ask your physics teacher about that oh, one. Oh my goodness. And the trajectory on that did not oh. seem to give that a high probability, but he makes that one. The unlikeliest three of the night, 35-26. In traffic, Bridges gets to the hole and he's fouled. Both West Virginia and EKU, when they've been able to break the pat, uh, press, they get some good looks. We're going to get another look at this Lewis three. Uh, that, that hit two inches inside the edge, if that. I don't know if you could practice a shot like that yeah, and make very so. many of them. Kind of like tri trick shot pool. <laughs> Bob Huggins said he had a lot of the players over for Thanksgiving dinner, and that's how they occupied their time. They played pool, and I believe he said Space Invaders. He's got a machine. After they ate everything in the house, yes. He said they went to work on that ham. Oh, my, turkey, ham, and everything else. I think they had already been somewhere before that. He said, I couldn't believe how much they ate. <laughs> Moreno back on. And as Kurt Lewis leaves, Bridges will get a second look. Moreno back in. He's their leading scorer, you know, preseason player of the year in the league, in the Sun League. You know, don't forget about him because this is one of these guys that can heat up in a hurry and hit four or five baskets. So even though he's not scoring not much now, don't forget about this guy. He was the first name that Bob Huggins mentioned to us. We yes. talked to him earlier today. Some pressure here from West Virginia against Beverly. Throws it behind the back and an offensive foul on Braxton Beverly. I wonder who took that. I would imagine <laughs> it's the guy we're looking at right now, Gabo Saboyan, took five charges against Oakland. Well, that's the most casual charge I've ever seen in my yeah. life. Sure. Beverly had no clue he was there. Just, that's oops, right. pardon me. Are you surprised Beverly seems to be the one having the most trouble with this pressure given well, he his experience, again, from NC State, fifth-year transfer. He's definitely having a hard time. He's gone from the game. Richard Crookshank back on. Michael Wardy under the basket. This is his first time in the game tonight. The Saboyan outside for McNeil to the corner. Curry for three. Oh, my, that's not, that one. And that's then picks up the Curry's foul. Game. Curry is more of a penetrator and then dish guy. Old Dominion's leading scorer last year. EKU switched up that time. They were in a 2-3 zone. So West Virginia has to be alert to those switching defenses. Coming up on five minutes to play in the first half. West Virginia has not led. And Gabo Saboyan thought he played good defense, picks up the foul. What do you think, Big? Boy, I don't know. Although, you know, every practice I go to, Hugs does yell at Gabe, keep your hands back, don't reach. And the official standing right there. Jerry Pollard thought that, yep, he reached in with that arm and got. We didn't see it from that angle. We saw it from the first angle, the contact with the body as well. Dave has to be careful because he has a tendency to pick up fouls and bunches. So he leaves. And Curry will be fouled trying for the steal on Jamaru Brown. Jamaru Brown. Excuse me, Gabe doesn't leave. My apologies. Brown picks up his third, and all of a sudden, this game, the pace of this game has slowed considerably. Yes, it has, but, you know, if West Virginia, with the, with the bench strength that they have, they, they'll have numbers, and uh, EKU beginning to get into some foul trouble. And Jerry Pollard having a conversation just a moment ago with Kelly Self. Brown leaves Kurt Lewis back on for Eastern Kentucky. We want to make sure they have the right guy at the line. So Malik Curry will shoot a pair. Just one of three from the stripe coming into this one. It's within a touchdown for West Virginia. Eastern Kentucky getting this done on the fast break. And they're not turning the ball over tonight. Well, that an early great three-point shooting. Six of them so far for Eastern Kentucky, but West Virginia has turned up the pressure on defense. Lead is six for EKU. Lewis, pressure. There's Moreno on the inside. Nice feed into the basket for Wardy and Osaboyan. Able to defend Wardy. And Wardy looked like he sure had a, a short layup inside. And Osaboyan, no, 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 not now. 
Said it's not going to come that easy. Eastern Kentucky hitting threes tonight like there's a Black Friday special <laughs> on them. Lewis trying to see if that still applies, and he's fouled by Polycap beyond the arc. And this may require a look to see if this is a flagrant. Well, I'm, I'm wondering, more, might be more of a flop than a flagrant. Jerry Pollard will come to the, I thought he was going to come to the table here. And not as much elbow contact from Polycap looking at it in the replay. A.W. Hamilton wants him to go to the monitor to look at that. In real time, I thought that elbow from Polycap hit Lewis on the chops. So Polycap will come off the floor. Moreno will launch, and that's offline. All of a sudden, Eastern Kentucky has gone cold from three. Lewis drives from the corner. He stepped out of bounds. He on the bow, yep. Lost track of where he was. And that's something I think it happened to you in a building like this. You're playing in a bigger building than usual. You got people on top of you. This crowd is back for the first time. Here's a great look at that angle from the baseline camera. Replay taking care of us tonight as always. Out of the basket, wide open look for Devon Kerrigan. Kerrigan in traffic gets it to go. Deficit down to four, four and a half to play in the first. Boy, good patience by Kerrigan. Crowd getting back into this one. A defensive stop here might turn the dial up a bit in the Coliseum. Osa Boyan, pressure on Lewis. Lewis turns the edge and an offensive foul on Kurt Lewis. Wow. I'm sure Hugs was holding his breath. Grabbed Osaboyan by the legs. I think he was coming around a corner. Here's the finish on the offensive end for West Virginia from Kerrigan. We see the foul. Yep. Got that arm around and hooked him. A one possession game for West Virginia if they hit here. Two three zone by Eastern Kentucky. That's the right place to get the ball inside right there. Osaboyan can't finish. Kerrigan digs it out. Reset the shot clock. Curry with space, drives, leads it under the basket, and Kerrigan can't flush oh it. Oh, my. Kerrigan wanted the foul on the way in. The Hugs did, too. He's barking at the official about that. Nice pass, though, by Malik Curry. And Beverly fouled by Gabe Osaboyan, and a flopping is a point of emphasis. They're going to have to go back and take a look at that one because wow. Beverly threw his head back. Four-point lead for Eastern Kentucky from the Coliseum. West Virginia staying against the A's Sun as Bellarmine comes in Tuesday night. That'll be on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. As West Virginia continues a homestand here at the WVU Coliseum. Opens tonight against Eastern Kentucky. Five games here at the Coliseum, including UConn. The return of the UConn Huskies early in December. Welcome back. The story of this game for Eastern Kentucky has been three-pointers. Hit six of their first nine from three, but just one of the last four. Well, yes, West Virginia's done a better job getting out on their shooters, making them rush. They're rushing shots right now where they were comfortable early on. The thing that's really remarkable to me right now, West Virginia with 10 offensive rebounds. And early on in the season, that had been an Achilles heel for West Virginia giving up offensive rebounds. But they're really crashing the offensive glass tonight. Braxton Beverly at the strike. And Beverly can't connect there. Four Eastern Kentucky turnovers the last 235. EKU in a bit of a scoring drought. Not hitting the threes. They're getting turned over. The things West Virginia was able to do early. 2-3 zone again. Sherman, turnaround yep. luck. And West Virginia makes this a one possession game for the first time in a long time. That foul line area is always going to be open. Hugs Smart puts Taz there knowing full well he can hit that shot. Brookshank breaks the pressure. Moreno at half court as Blanton driving. Brookshank gets it back. Brookshank bobbles, holds. Shot clock down to 10. 
All of a sudden, that ball move that was there early in the game for Eastern Kentucky, not the case anymore. Four on the shot clock. Beverly needs help. He'll go to the corner, and at the buzzer, shot clock violation as Crookshank misses everything. That free throw line area is wide open, and Taz can knock that down all evening. First time in a while, we will say this. The Mountaineers can tie or lead this trip down the floor. Scoring drought for EKU fully on. Kerrigan finds Sherman on the wing. Working it back outside of McNeil. I haven't seen McNeil shoot in a while. Shot clock at five. Curry goes. They kick it. Sherman for three in the lead. West Virginia back on top. That's exactly what Curry needs to do. He drove. He, he had the traffic come to him, and he kicked it to Sherman. It's a 10 0 run for West Virginia. Wardy under the basket. The lead goes back to Eastern Kentucky. That ends that 10 0 run on the first points of the night from Michael Wardy. Crowd have been back into this game for the first time really all night long. Yeah, really. Well, didn't have much cheer about, to cheer about early on the way Eastern Kentucky was making shots. Sherman double team near half court. This bridge is open from the corner. Bridges can't get that to fall. In transition, a lot of points for Eastern Kentucky that way tonight. And Wardy right in Curry's face. Two in flush. Wardy with a spark for Eastern Kentucky. Maniacs behind us on their feet. Curry off balance, leaner, and he's fouled. Big bucket here from Curry, or from Wardy, from Wardy Michael Wardy. So Wardy picks up the foul on the other end. Did that right in Curry's face, winning a size mismatch. Well, yeah, it was. But, you know, that's what Eastern really needed because they had struggled here recently shooting the ball from the perimeter. Well, go in and get something easy if you can. Kind of like if I was trying to defend you going to the basket. <laughs> you wouldn't have to worry about that. I can't make it. I could defend. <laughs> Kerrigan leaves for West Virginia. Isaiah Cottrell back on. Malik Curry twirls behind the back and launches a little short. Oh, boy. Lead stays at three. West Virginia not getting it done from the free throw stripe tonight. Now to there's eight of 16. And in a three-point game, that's the difference. That's huge. Final minute of play in the first half. Braxton Beverly drives. Door slams shut. Here's Moreno. One-hand floater uses the window. Boy. He is a money man, and you know, again, they all go to him when they need. The preseason player of the year in the A-Sun Conference, Michael Moreno, makes this a five-point game. And a timeout, West Virginia chooses to use it rather than lose it. The Hux said, yeah, that's all he really talked about, how good of a player Moreno is. Look at that body control just now. Did not pick up a charge. Those were, the, those were the two words that I was thinking of, body control, body control there. Yeah, yeah, you know. And again, he's a guy that can score in bunches, and, and once he gets cranked up, I mean, you, you really have to know where he is. Seven for Moreno tonight, and Bob Huggins concerned about him. One of the first guys he mentioned to us, we went into talking about specific players to shoot around. Yep, and that was the name that he kept bringing up. So after slamming the door shut, on West Virginia's 10-0 run that gave the Mountaineers a lead. Eastern Kentucky out on a 6-0 run now in the last minute 28. 34 seconds and change left in this first half. Eric Little, Warren Baker, Amanda Mazey at the WVU Coliseum. Our producers, Roger Lennart, Eva Buckman's our director tonight. Thank you for making us a part of your Thanksgiving weekend. I know Warren and I had nice celebrations. We we're talking about that a little bit oh, yeah. this afternoon. And Amanda said all she had to do was make one side dish and bring it over to the house. <laughs> I didn't cook either, did you? No. <laughs> well, I did the turkey, but... Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, uh, just, just the star of the show, nothing yeah. big. <laughs> all right, West Virginia in need of a good shot here. 
Sherman on the blocks. He'll go strong to the hole and a tip in from Cottrell. Boy, Coach Hamilton said that should have been basket interference. Cross half court, Beverly's got to hurry. Three on the clock. Sherman doing a great job to defend him, and he will not get the shot away. Sherman knocks it loose, and the score will stay 41-38 at the half. Let's go to Amanda Mazie standing by with Bob Huggins. All right, Coach, EKU came out red hot in the first half there. You guys were able to cool them down midway through. How did you adjust your game plan? I don't know if we did. We haven't stayed in front of anybody, so they're getting penetrating pitches. They're slowing us down because we don't attack the press. We just, we haven't played very well. You're winning the offensive board battle, but not defensively. How do you adjust in the second half to win it down here in the defensive end? They've made them all. They've made them all. How are we going to rebound it when they make it? They've made, they've made them all. We just haven't, we haven't guarded them very well. We're on the side of them. They're getting straight line drives at us. Then we got over help. That's what happens. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Eric? Heard a lot about line drives in this half. And that's what Eastern Kentucky is doing. They've made enough threes early on. The line drives there, second off. 41-38, Eastern Kentucky up at the half. West Virginia's leads have been slim. We'll talk about it after this on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think he likes it when nobody is really getting his team the type of respect that, you know, they may earn as the season goes on. But, yeah, would rather be there right now than, than at the top of the heap. And then, of course, after what happened to Kansas today, you don't know what this league's going to be like. Could be topsy-turvy somewhat. And, hey, that's that's the West Virginia thing. That's right. And no one expects a whole lot. And you go in and you exceed expectations. Yeah. Just three guys ahead of him on the all-time coaching list. Again, 904, not a number he's terribly concerned with. Krzyzewski, Bayheim, Calhoun, Huggins. Wow. Not, a bad, not a bad law firm. Not, not at all. West Virginia coming out of the second half with their starting five on the floor, Kedri and Johnson, Isaiah Cattell, Taz Sherman, Shaw McNeil, and Jalen Bridges. A lot of foul trouble for EKU, and that's likely going to weigh in and play a pretty big part in the final 20 minutes of this one. They'll bring Richard Cruikshank, Jansen Williams, Michael Moreno, Kurt Lewis, and Cooper Robb, who will down from in front of us. Well, Cooper Robb is another guy that you can't forget about if you're West Virginia because he is a three-point expert as well. Intensity here for Lewis, driving the hole, slings it to Williams, and Williams starts the second half like he started the first. You almost need to lock up on him and not ha give help. You saw what happened just now. You leave him to go give help, and boy, I'll tell you what, he gets set, he'll knock it down. It's Williams' fourth three of the night. And West Virginia answer, trailing by six. Pressure turned up here defensively for Eastern yep, Kentucky. Yep. Shot clock's at 10. McNeil can't find space. And a foul called away from the basket. Williams picks up number three. Right there, Cottrell leaves to come in to help. And that freed up, with, you know, you, you can't do that. You just have to stay out there and hope that the rest of those guys can collapse and stop that drive. Isaiah made a, uh, a mistake by leaving Williams open, and you saw the results. Again, Williams has got to be careful on defense. He just picked up his third. He's still got 19 minutes and change left. Yeah, Coach Hamilton, boy, he just put his hands in his, in his face and his hands in there. Yeah, I did not want to see that. From the corner here, Sherman, and Sherman cuts the lead in half for Eastern Kentucky. Just West Virginia's third three of the night. And again, West Virginia could stand a few more of those from beyond yes, the arc. They could. Crowd getting into this one. Lewis drives. Same spot. Williams hit. He'll go to the line to shoot three. Bridges picks up the foul. And again, West Virginia sloughing off the help right there. And Williams, he just kind of, you know, migrates to that corner. He's comfortable there. And now Williams with an opportunity. You know, Taz cuts that lead in half, but uh, Williams is able to go to the line now and shoot three. Taz seemingly quietly has 13 points tonight. Yeah. 
Jansen Williams at free throw line for the Cardinals. Some concern for Jansen Williams. He's a slow off the bench, but he'll go to the line for his first of three. This is Williams' first trip to the stripe in this one. Williams with 13 points tonight, make it 14. Osa Boyan comes on with place Jalen Bridges. Now with Gabe coming in, you have to be worried that he doesn't pick up a cheap foul, which he has a tendency to do. West Virginia is certainly going to need him throughout this whole second half. Osa Boyan back on as Williams makes all three. On Coach Huggins' radio show Monday, that was one of the things that he was asked about Osa Boyan. Is, foul, is staying out of foul trouble the biggest key to his game? And he said yes. Yes. Without question. Adrian Johnson looking for something inside. Cottrell pops out from the basket. Ten on the shot clock. Guarded by Jansen Williams. A handoff to Taz. Against Cooper Robb. Step back. Long two. And almost fell. West Virginia with a nice tip out. McNeil, mid-range look from the left wing, and McNeil heating up. I'd like to see Sean McNeil do a lot more of that. And pressure for West Virginia, and a foul to score's table on Osaboyan, and that's not where you needed not to get one. Oh, boy. For a guy that has trouble staying out of foul trouble, there's the McNeil mid-range shot. Boy, Osaboyan. He's going to have to play on pins and needles the rest of this one. Well, and, and as a Mountaineer fan, that's what, uh, that's what you're going to be dealing with the entire year. As much as Hugs talks about it, he's such an aggressive player that I don't think he can help himself sometimes. Osa Boyan leaves. Bridges back on. Eastern Kentucky's leads at four. And Bridges whistled with a foul. Guarding Jansen Williams, and Williams had a lot of body co contact from Bridges before the call came. Yeah, it was. I'm not 100% sure that you could argue much about that. There was a lot of contact. Jalen right in the middle of it. He's jamming him with that left arm. Yeah. And Hudson, I think Hudson will eventually be okay with that, providing you get that same call at the other end. Rob working off the pick. Look inside, and it's too tall for Williams, too wide for Williams. Good idea by Rob. Just led Williams too much. They had set up what they needed. Williams had made a nice backdoor cut. Rob just with an errant pass. Could be a big stop for West Virginia, needing a bucket of some sort to make this a one-possession game again. Outlet to McNeil. No wait for his offense to catch up. Herman looks for a cutter. And he has Jalen Bridges. And Bridges goes through the back door and makes oh, this a one possession game. What a great pass from Taz Sherman. Moreno in the middle of the floor finds Rob outside for three. A little strong. And a good rebound for Lewis. And the putback doesn't go. We get another opportunity. That's Lewis on those boards again, West Virginia. Pass the box out. Moreno turns the edge. Extra pass to Crookshank. And Rashard Crookshank hits for the first time tonight. He had no points in the first half. He puts EKU up 50 45. Sherman drives to the hole. Sherman is fouled. You don't want to get out of your offensive rhythm, but you'd really, if you were West Virginia, like to maybe see somebody go at Williams. See if you can get an isolation on Williams. And I, I, can't, I can't believe that he's going to play a lot of defense if, if he's got those foul troubles. So, but again, you don't want to get out of your offense to do that. But if that opportunity presents itself, go at him. Well, EKU has been in foul trouble really from about the midpoint of the first, first half. half yes. So you've got to drive at some of these guys the, the if you're West Virginia. That could be a huge, huge factor in this game. As we get on the stretch, as Sherman misses. Eastern Kentucky cooled off from beyond the arc. 9 of 15, 50%, but they started 6 of 9. Well, you got Marino and Williams both 
going to the sideline for EKU. West Virginia really needs to get some things done with those two stars on the bench. Devontae Blanton and Michael Wardy coming on the floor for EKU, and you're right, stealing some minutes for the, or stealing a break from those, those three-point shooters as we're up against the electronic media timeout. The print media doesn't like it when it's called the media timeout. Still a good place to steal an extra breath for those guys. And West Virginia gets it back with a chance to again cut this deficit to one possession. Bob Huggins had said in his uh, presser the other day that fans will love this type of game. He says, I can't stand it. He said, <laughs> it drives me crazy. Sherman's got a cut on his hand, so we'll have to come and get some attention for that. So unfortunately, he also may get an unexpected break before the media timeout. Are they going to let an athletic trainer, Randy Metter, come and patch this up? So it looks like we'll go ahead and get the stoppage here as they patch Sherman up and he's good to go. It's a good tight shot on Sherman's hand. We had there a minute ago. Well, you know Taz doesn't want to come out of the ball game. In football, a lot of times they make you miss a play right. if you've got an issue, if they have to remove you from the game. In basketball, it's a quick pit stop and you're back up. We're ready to go. Adrian Johnson across the timeline for West Virginia. And the bucket brings them back within a possession. Sherman double team. Room for Bridges. A little strong on the three. EKU going back the other way. Boy, Jalen really struggling from behind the arc. Brookshank tries to turn the corner, and they'll call that on Demond Kerrigan. The foul on Kerrigan brings us to that timeout. 16 on the clock in the second half. And Eastern Kentucky continues to lead. They're up four on the Mountaineers. Back to the Coliseum. So tonight might be Coach Hamilton's first time coaching against WVU. But he already has a victory against the Mountaineers. He played at Marshall from 2002 to 2005. And in his senior year, his team beat the Mountaineers in the Capital Classic. The Mountaineers were heavily favored in that one, but the Thundering Herd came away with a 58-52 win. Hamilton scored in 17 points in that game. He played WVU all three years while he was at Marshall, but this is his first time in the Coliseum, and he said it's just an honor to play against Huggins. He has a lot of respect for him and calls him a genuine, nice person. He also told me that when they won that game against the Mountaineers, Marshall called themselves the state champs that year, so he was pretty proud of that, that Eric. Cool. Amanda College Me was not a big fan of A.W. Hamilton, but adult me, Really like meeting A.W. Hamilton today yeah. because I think he's an up-and-comer in this industry. Sure. Boy, nice set out of the timeout by EKU. On the other end to answer, Adrian Johnson connects. Not as pretty as the alley-oop on the yeah. EKU end. That drive uh, coaches crazy because they worked on those inbounds plays all you know, before the game, and they, they got able to get it one just now. Really Blanton, nice. Blanton found Rob. Rob almost popped the three. EKU looking to go deeper into the possession. Shot clock's at nine. Here's Braxton Beverly. First time we've seen him on the floor in a long time. And Beverly silky smooth. It is Beverly's second three of the evening. And EKU's tenth. Again, 13 or more threes in all but one of their games. And the one they didn't do it in was a game that they won. Uh -oh. Foul there for EKU on Michael Wardy. He was just into this game. He had the nice alley-oop on the offensive oh, end, but he hacked Sherman right here. Tash Sherman at the stride for West Virginia. Well, Again, Tash, Tash 14 doing points. A lot, and they're going to ask for more out of him, I'm sure, down the stretch. That one Plinko's its way home. Career high 27 against Elon in the Charleston Classic as Rob leaves, and we'll see 
Jamara Brown back on. Well, Rob has been quiet tonight, but again, he's not one of those shooters that can really fill it up when he gets hot. West Virginia's done a good job on him. Workman-like effort at the line for Tanis Sherman. That's the benefit of a roster that's built like this, Warren. EKU, if one of their shooters is not hitting, chance are pretty good someone else is. The only thing that was hitting was Kurt Lewis's foot. But yeah. Now, if West Virginia, and, and I don't know how they're going to do it, has to find a way to get Sean McNeil some shots. Sean is not like Taz. He doesn't really, he has, you know, I don't know whether it's coming off screens or what, but this guy's too good of a shooter and scorer. He's got to get some shots for West Virginia. Good defensive play you saw from Kedrian Johnson. We'll see what he can do on the offensive end for West Virginia. Again, to make this a one possession game. Double team, Johnson needs help, finds it. And Bridges, six on the shot clock. Bridges fouled. And Bridges will need to do better from the line than he's done from the field this evening. Just one of seven from the field. They need him right here. Jalen is uh, suffering right now from some confidence issues. Just relax, he's too good of a player. He'll come back. Everybody has nights when they don't shoot the ball particularly well. Just a sophomore hits the first half there. Okay. I feel like those roller coaster rides of confidence really hit hard freshman and sophomore years for, for guys to play do. early on in their career. Sure. Second for Bridges. And sometimes a, a trip to the foul line will get a guy started. And once again, West Virginia back within three of Eastern Kentucky. They steal some minutes for Jansen Williams. He's back on the floor. Michael Wardy leaves. Here's Jamaro Brown. They find Williams quickly. And Beverly, you know he wants a heat check. He'll take it and he'll miss it. But Williams cleans it up and can't finish. Another effort for Williams. And he's tied up. The arrow favors West Virginia. Boy, Coach Hamilton is ready to blow a gasket. Wow. I can read his lips. He said he got fouled three times. A lot of contact. Officials letting these guys play under the basket tonight. We, the majority of the fouls we've seen have been away from the basket, but under the basket, anything goes this evening. No, I think it is. Yeah. And again, yeah, there is contact, but as long as the officials call it both ways, you handle that. West Virginia trying to break this pressure of Eastern Kentucky. It's been persistent all night. West Virginia's only led for 15 seconds. That came in the first half. The three times it here for the Mountaineers. Sherman drives, kicks, McNeil flies, oh. it's in and out. Kerrigan off the glass of Demond Kerrigan pulls West Virginia within one. Boy, excellent, excellent positioning by Kerrigan. Back in transition, EKU, Blanton under the basket for Williams and a foul. That's Demond Kerrigan on West Virginia. Again, here's the second chance effort for West Virginia. West Virginia dominating the second chance point, points category 15-5 tonight. This is what they need out of Kerrigan. This is what they need that's, out of the bigs. That's exactly right. Polly Cap and Kerrigan both. They're here to block some shots. They're here to create some offensive chances. And maybe chew some bubble gum. They're all out of gum. <laughs> Boy, Sean McNeil had a tough break on that shot. Certainly Kerrigan there to clean it up and get the basket, but... Uh, that's the type of look that Sean McNeil needs. I wouldn't play Powerball if I were Sean McNeil tonight. Williams, man, that one will roll around and fall. So the second one good for Williams. Two-point lead for Eastern Kentucky. Nash Sherman with the ball in his hand, breaks the pressure. Two ties to three gives West Virginia lead. Polycap can't get the loose ball, and it stays. It goes back to Eastern Kentucky. Yeah. They've Miscommunication the, there. It worked the steal. It coughed it right back up. Eastern Kentucky's biggest lead has been 12. They're led by a dozen halfway through the first half. Brown with a kick to the wing. Blanton double teamed in trouble. They go outside to look for Jamaru Brown and 
An offensive foul. Polakamp takes the charge. Well, West Virginia had EKU totally out of rhythm just now. It all started with that double team, and then it just, uh, you know, trickled down from there and then ended up being a turnover for Eastern Kentucky, West Virginia ball. Make EKU in the first few minutes of this half had the same rhythm they had early on, but rhythm's a good word to bring up because they really haven't had it of late. No, like, they haven't. Like they had at the beginning of the game at the beginning of this half. So West Virginia again looking to tie or lead this trip. Kobe Johnson, Bridges all put in the corner, passes it up. Sherman wants Paul DeCamp to come out and set a pick. Another look for Kobe Johnson on the baseline. Jammed up there. Eight to shoot. Sherman fouled. And he'll shoot three. Braxton Beverly, the guilty party. Well, that's what a, that's what a great shooter will do to you, you know. Beverly came out to try to contest. And you can say what you want to say to the officials. When you have a guy like Sherman shooting that basketball, they take a good look at that. Somebody else may not have gotten that call, but certainly that was clearly a foul, and Taz Sherman, the recipient of three shots. Kind of like the strike zone for a three, for, for a Cy Young winner. Yeah, well, yeah, a little wider. Exactly. Sherman can tie it with a second. EKU's not hit from the field the last 234. Sherman, tie ball game. This crowd has been itching for something to cheer for all night. It certainly has. A strong crowd this evening on the day after Thanksgiving at the WVU Coliseum. West Virginia is only led for 15 seconds. That came in the second quarter. Sherman puts West Virginia on top for the second time tonight. His three did it in the first half. And now the free throw gets these West Virginia fans going. Many of them rising to their feet from the Coliseum. Hostile road environment for EKU. Devontae Blanton drives and he's swatted by Polycap. Wow. Good ups for Polly Polycap. This is the West Virginia team that Bob Huggins was talking about on Sunday. But he said, this is my team. That was my team tonight. Are they showing up here? Sherman stripped on his way up. Beverly back in transition does not have numbers. He doesn't have footing either. But a foul put him on the ground. Wow. Adrian Johnson picks up the foul, and there's Polly Polycap. Well, Polly Polycap and Kerrigan both came in with the reputation of being shot blockers. Nice job of protecting the rim. Apparently, Smuckers had a Black Friday sale, and Polycap took all the jam. <laughs> Okay, I'll admit that one was cooked up ahead of time. <laughs> Wide open look for Jansen Williams. That was too easy for EKU. I don't know where the miscommunication is, but uh, that's the second basket out of uh, out of bounds play that's been really easy for EKU. McNeil mid range from the baseline, and apparently some jam left over for Devontae Blanton as he swatted. That one out of bounds, 11.48 to play. EKU leads by a one at the WVU Coliseum. The homestand continues for West Virginia on Tuesday. Four left after tonight as Bellarmine and Radford to follow. Those games We brought to you by our folks here at Big 12 Now and ESPN Plus, our fine crew responsible for that. And then how about this? Proper Enemy comes back to the Coliseum, former Big East rival UConn, 21st ranked team in the nation. Should be yeah, a highly anticipated game to celebrate. I, I watched them play. They, they are good. You know, homecoming for a source for Darius Nichols next week uh, when he brings his Radford crew into uh, in the Morgantown. I know a lot of be a, Mount, a lot of Mountaineer fans, you know. Uh, very glad to see glad his to career. See yeah. yeah. His career, his, his coaching career has gone very well. West Virginia needs a bucket. Down one. See if they can regain the lead. The only two times they've had the lead, Tash Sherman's been the guy to give them the lead, and he's on the floor now. 2-3 zone. 
Five to shoot. Kobe Johnson will rise. Leave that one off the iron. Polycap runs it down the baseline. West Virginia with a fresh shot clock. Well, I'd like to see McNeil pull the trigger on that. He'll pull the trigger on this one. And it's a little strong. He's just not been able to get it going tonight. Oh. And really, for most of the Clemson game, he struggled from the field, yeah, too. Did. Well, you said this earlier. Shooters are going to shoot. And you like you want your shooters to do that. Yeah, that's right. Shoot them their way out of a, a slump. Cooper Rob well defended by Sean McNeil. And now the play with the shot clock down to 10 for EKU. And the baseline is swing to Williams. Spot up, and Williams drains another. Six threes for Jansen Williams. The lead 61-57 for EKU. West Virginia has been scoreless from the field the last 234. West Virginia stripped again. Williams has 21 tonight to lead all scores. Just had the three and gets the steal there. Boy, a huge turnover. West Virginia needed to get a good shot. Down four. West Virginia needs a good defensive stand. Beverly drives. He struggled handling the ball and shooting the ball in a lot of facets tonight. He's got five on the shot clock. He's got to go. Pulls it up and a floor foul on West Virginia's Molly Curry. There's Williams, three. Williams. Ties his career best at EKU at 21. He doesn't rush anything. You know, he's smooth the same way, lets it go each time. Those mechanics are tough to get repeatable, to, yeah, to be right. repeatable with those. But you can tell by how much he's worked on that. And the guys that have the most success tend to be the ones that are easily able to replicate that time in and time out. Right. And Beverly hits again for the stripe. You know, it seems easier to shoot a three like that, too, when you don't have to worry about the coach yelling at you for taking that shot. Yeah, that's what they do, you know? And then, yeah, so you miss one or miss two, miss three, keep putting it up. And if you're playing at this level and you're known as a three-point shooter, you probably have the green light, and that's probably a conversation that happens early on. Yeah, that does, exactly. It's happened multiple times, or you only have to be told once. Is that a conversation you have again and again? It is, yeah. yeah. That free throw area is open. Somebody needs a flash in there that can get a shot. Osa Boyan in there. They kick it to the wing. Ten to shoot. Sherman tries it. And Sherman hits. West Virginia back within three on a clutch three from Taz oh, Sherman. How many big baskets is that guy yet? 22 wow. tonight for Sherman. They may need 44. Yeah. Beverly's pass tip. Johnson with a tip. Ahead to Sherman. Kicks. Gets it back from Johnson. Sherman to tie. Little long. Moreno grabs the loose ball. A drive from Braxton. Beverly swatted by Kobe Johnson. And now Beverly trapped behind the play. It's five on four. If West Virginia hurries, they don't. But Beverly's back in now. Sherman double teamed, working out of it. Skip pass, McNeil wide open. Out front, Johnson. Sherman into the basket, 10 to shoot. Here's Osaboyan with a hook, and yes. Osaboyan rattles one hole. Big shot by Gabe. 5-0 run for West Virginia. They're back within one with eight and a half to play. They're coming up on eight and a half to play. And again, the building gets loud. The folks behind us getting into this one. Whatever maniacs are back from Thanksgiving break. I know many maniacs watching at home on their feet in their living rooms as well. Wide open Cooper Rob for three. And Rob slices the Nets again. And a timeout for A.W. Hamilton and EKU. West Virginia's to within four, but EKU continues to be red hot from beyond the arc. Back to the 
Welcome back to the WVU Coliseum. Eastern Kentucky hanging on thanks to the three-point shooting of Jansen Williams. And, you know, all of his shots look the same when he lets it go. The feet are set. The rhythm is good. He doesn't hesitate. 21 points for Williams. Six threes tonight. That ties a career best for Jansen Williams. The Marshall transfer from Newman, Georgia. West Virginia down four, eight to play. As Sherman back on the floor for West Virginia. Adrian Johnson trying to get the ball there. More than anybody, he's got seven to shoot there, Sherman. He'll pop, he'll leave that one short. Good work for DeMond Kerrigan into the basket. Kerrigan rips it away and puts it right back up. Go back over there and get that. Get that good position inside. That second chance point. Not every post player wants to rip that ball down and then go right back up with it. They just want to stay there and tip it a lot of times, not Kerrigan. And an offensive foul wipes the bucket away for Kurt Lewis. West Virginia hanging in there on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Eastern Kentucky up two, but big fourth foul on Kurt Lewis. Gabe Osaboyan takes the charge. Coach Hamilton did not like the call, but you know, Gabe has that reputation now, and I thought he had good enough position to get that. If you drive down the middle of the lane and he's on the floor, you better know that he's going to be somewhere around. Foul trouble going to be a big factor for Eastern Kentucky. Yes, it is. Lewis and Jamara Brown with four, three for Jansen Williams, who's been red hot from beyond the arc. Williams with a career best 21, six threes. West Virginia can tie or lead this trip. Inside seven and a half to play for the WVU Coliseum. Eric Little, Warren Baker, Amanda Maisie, and our entire Big 12 Now and ESPN Plus crew. Thank you for having us into your homes on this Thanksgiving weekend. Right now, West Virginia be thankful for a bucket. They're not going to get it on this possession. Williams with a strip. They head to Lewis. They give and go, and Williams foul. Boy, a bad turnover by West Virginia just now. Goodness it. Just West Virginia's sixth turnover tonight. Yeah, but they're, they're coming in crucial times. A chance to tie or, or take the lead. A little careless maybe for McNeil? Yeah, yeah, to get, and especially when you're giving the ball to your big post out there. That's, that's not usually a good combination. Jansen Williams back at the line. Been four of five from there tonight. Again, his 21, topped only by Tash Sherman's 22 for West Virginia. And a big miss there. As that means EKU cannot make this a two possession game this trip. Only Curry back on. Kedrian Johnson takes a break for West Virginia. Williams will launch three point game. Biggest test of the season so far for Eastern Kentucky. They're five and one. But this is a big step up in competition for the Colonels. Yeah, could have very easily have been 6-0. They had a chance to beat James Madison. That's only a one-point loss. West Virginia 4-1. and one. You're a West Virginia fan. You know that Marquette is that loss. Richard Crookshank picks up the foul. Oh, Richard Crookshank is first. He's Crookshank fouling Curry. And as Bob Huggins said on the radio show this week, the game against Marquette was West Virginia snatching defeat out of the jaws of victory, whereas Sunday was West Virginia snatching victory out of the jaws of defeat against Clemson. Yeah. Malik Curry missed two earlier. Really needs to knock these down. Yep. A big first. Five of five from the field against Pitt in West Virginia's last home game. Well, now we got Gabo Saboyan going at it with Kurt Lewis. And Lewis with four fouls. You know, Saboyan not exactly out of foul trouble himself. Now, Gabe, Gabe really needs to settle down right now. I'm not sure which of these two players will be the bigger loss for their team if they're fouled oh, out. My. Jerry Pollard, a veteran official, sending both teams back to the benches. Yep. Get some heads to cool before 
before you continue. Well, now they go to the monitor. Let's take a look and see what exactly happened. It was after the free throw. And it was about something Jansen Williams said. Yeah. Williams said something. I was looking at Lewis the whole time, but it was Williams that said something that Osa Boyan heard and took offense. He took offense with it. And he turned around and then Lewis got involved. So pardon, it was not Kurt Lewis, but Jansen Williams that was running his mouth. Well, the officials are overlooking at the uh, monitor right now to see what may have precipitated that, but really. Looks like he's talking to Damon Kerrigan as well, but Osaboyan's the guy that stepped in and really took umbrage with what was said. There's got to be a part of you, too, if you're West Virginia, that you like seeing Gabe Osaboyan stand up for the new guy in Damon Kerrigan because we talked about a lot of the transfer issues, and one of the big things that the wider open transfer portal does is it means you got a lot of new faces. Every team has new faces. Yes, they do. And that's chemistry that you've got to work to build somehow. That, that's exactly right. And you know, Dave was saying, hey, he's one of ours now. And let's go. You get a problem with him. Yeah. I got a problem with you, says right. Osaboyan. Really, really would like to know what was said there that you know, the officials are going to come over and let us know what's happening here. Veteran officiating crew, and it's good work, I think, Warren. They're just going to let these guys play on. Yeah, they, they stopped the action to let the players cool down a little bit. Nobody cited for anything. The officials just said, we want to break this up. It's been a, high, a hotly contested ball game from the beginning, and he doesn't want anything to erupt here now. Get a lot of experience on this crew. Jerry Pollard, Kelly Self. We just talked to KB Burnett a minute ago. Pollard, the one talking with... Bob Huggins right now. The conversation continuing between the veteran Pollard and the veteran Huggins. Going to be a few thousand basketball games those two men have oh my. been a part of. Curry at the stripe once this is all said and done. Here's the second. Then he much pulls better on those two than the other two that he missed. Yeah. Much, much better. Pulls West Virginia to within one. Now the Deers clawing their way back into this one. Eastern Kentucky has led almost entirely in this game. West Virginia's leads have been oh, yes. less than a minute. And a double dribble called against Rashard Cruikshank. I thought they were going to call a carry, but yeah, either way. Well, I made the joke about the carry in the little kids game at the half. <laughs> he definitely brings the second hand up to the basketball right. on the way over. At an inadvertent thing, but now West Virginia can lead this trip down the floor. Need a really good possession here. Take care of the ball. Kerrigan wide open. We go inside for Sherman. There's the look you want. Osaboyan. Floor foul called on Devontae Blanton. Oh no, Kurt Lewis Jr. I thought that was one four, so Lewis has fouled out of this game. Yes, yeah. My apologies. Huge, huge fifth foul for Kurt Lewis. It certainly is. So Lewis leaves with eight points tonight. He's their leading rebounder on the game tonight, too. So that is a big loss. Eight rebounds, eight points for Eastern Kentucky's Kurt Lewis. Lewis done for the night. And Braxton Beverly back on, and he has been somewhat shaky for this EKU Colonels team. Well, yeah, but he's hit some big shots. Uh, Gabe Osaboyan at the line. Big free throws. This to tie for Osaboyan, eight tonight. He launches, and he can't connect. It wasn't close. Williams rips it down. The lead's at one for EKU. Michael Moreno. To find Beverly between the circles. Eastern Kentucky looking for an early season RPI win. And West Virginia looking to knock off one of the A-Suns best. A good steal from Curry. Beverly with his pocket pick. Curry coast to coast. West Virginia leads. Curry.
Highway Robbery in Morgantown. The ball handling issue's been there all night long for Braxton Beverly. And to shoot. And Beverly Creed has got Williams off and doesn't seize him. Goes the other side for Moreno. A miss. And it's Eastern Kentucky's ball. Boy, Bob Hayes wanted an over the back, did not get a call. Here's the steal. Kerrigan sends it back ahead to Curry, and that puts West Virginia ahead. Pauly Polycap replaces DeMond Kerrigan. West Virginia needs to be careful. Some of the best plays that Eastern Kentucky's had tonight have been off in, uh, inbounds plays under the basket. There's got to be some communication here. You just can't give up an easy layup here. And they've got Jansen Williams in that corner where he's been hot all evening. He's like that corner in front of the EKU bench. You see him at the top of the screen, guarded by Pauly Polycamp. Need some communication here. And Beverly calls timeout. Timeout by Eastern Kentucky. And again, Beverly, another guy that's here through the transfer portal. Yeah. Tough to build that chemistry. Yeah, yeah you're right. It certainly is. Yeah. Eastern Kentucky's been without any field goals in nearly three minutes. We're talking about them in the A Sun. They came over from the Ohio Valley Conference in July and they picked to finish second in the A Sun. You see Bellarmine at number four, the opponent for West Virginia on Tuesday. Stetson, a popular gift around Christmas time, <laughs> among other teams in that A Sun. Liberty, but again, Liberty gets nine first place votes, but just to show you how fractured that conference is, there, there are four different teams that got first place got votes. First place votes, yeah. A very competitive league once again. Well, again, there's a lot of uncertainty with the, with the transfer portals. You just don't know who's going to mesh and who's going to be able to step up. Everybody using November into December to either figure out who they've got that could be useful or develop people to be useful for them. Good ball movement to Moreno. Rob looking for a good shot. It's stolen. Osaboyan. West Virginia looking to build their lead. Good, good decision by Curry. Back out, get things set. Veteran ball handler has it knocked loose. Well defended oh. this time by Jansen Williams. Rob goes the other way, and he can't finish. Blanton has it tied up. Too much of a hot dog there. Curry ties him up. The arrow favors EKU. Something simpler would have been in order. Yes. That ball just rolled up yep. Rob's wrist. Nineteen to shoot for Moreno. Launches and sinks. Michael Moreno makes this a 70-68 EKU lead. West Virginia needs some help to get this ball in bounds. Fourth tray of the night for Moreno. EKU's turned it over four times in the last three and a half minutes. Ball knocked out of bounds. West Virginia will inbound from in front of their head coach. Now Huggins looking to pull the right strings in the final four minutes plus of this one. The biggest test West Virginia's had at home this season. Sherman wide open for three and the lead. West Virginia out in front by one. Well, a defensive lapse by EKU to allow Sherman to get that wide open. Sherman with 25 tonight, approaching a career best. Moreno's been hot this half. Williams switches sides. Blanton guarded by Sherman, 10 to shoot. EKU down one, Blanton spins and is fouled on his way in. Holly Polycap picks up the foul. Taz Sherman gives West Virginia the lead, pumps the electricity back into the Coliseum crowd. 71-70 on this tray for Taz Sherman.
West Virginia, it's all been Taz Sherman in this game, 25 to lead all scores. Well, you know, again, Taz is the glue, and uh, when, West, when West Virginia needs something to happen, they go to this young man, whether it be a three-pointer or whether he has to create his own. Career high for Sherman Thursday in the win against Elon. 27 points that night. There he is. It's been a pretty balanced attack. And I said earlier when he had 13, it seemed like he was getting it done really quietly. Nothing quiet about a second half. No, not at all. Six or seven this half. Eastern Kentucky's got 13 threes tonight. West Virginia shooting just 44% from the field, but they lead it by one. Blanton cannot get the tie for ETU. EKU 7 of 11 from the free throw line. West Virginia 18 of 28. EKU shooting 50% from the field. West Virginia below that. Now we're tied on the Blanton freebie. And coming down to the wire in Morgantown between the 5 and 1 EKU Colonels and the 4 and 1 West Virginia Mountaineers. Malik Curry's done the majority of the ball handling chores for West Virginia this half. And swing to Sherman, a drive, well defended. He gets the foul in the bucket, and that's Jansen Williams picking up number four for EKU. For just a little pump fake to get Williams off his feet, and Taz knew what to do with it. Go ahead, initiate that contact. And that's the guy who needs to have the ball driven his way. For a new career high, Taz Sherman. And a three-point lead to boot. Yeah, does not fall off the iron. Rosa Boyan runs it down. New shot clock for West Virginia and the lead. Huge rebound by Gabe. He's been a monster under the basket in this one. And pretty much in every other way for West Virginia. Just four rebounds tonight, but it seems like he's done a lot more work than that. Curry off balance leader, rolls through. Yeah. 75-71, now all of a sudden it's EKU that needs a bucket. Good solid defense needed by West Virginia. A drive for Rob, tripped up, and a floor foul called, and that's going to be Malik Curry. Wow. Number three on Curry. Almost stumbled getting to slam the door closed. Boy, Rob, Rob fortunate there. That, uh, that could have been a no call the way some contact's been going tonight. Rob connects, and you're right, Bake. It seems like under the basket, people are getting away with a lot more than away from the basket from beyond the arc. Right. One possession game for a team that likes to shoot the three, and Rob will leave it that way. Two and a half to play, West Virginia. Looking to outpace EKU. EKU staying in a 2-3 zone, and Bob Huggins wants to time out. Talk this thing over. West Virginia, in their wins this year, have held opponents to less than 60 a game. Their one loss, Clemson scored, not Clemson, but rather Marquette scored 82 points. And right now, EKU running the score into that range. Range, that's right. So in this timeout, what is Bob Huggins trying to accomplish here? What does he want this team to do with the lead in the ball? Well, actually, Larry Harrison is taking over in the huddle. Bob is uh, politicking there on these calls that he's going to... He still doesn't think that that was a foul on Malik Curry. At this level, you almost need two or three head coaches on the bench. Larry Harrison, a veteran, so, and somebody that can run a huddle like that while your head coach goes out and, and lobbies. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Larry, uh, Hugs knows that Larry knows exactly what needs to be done. Hugs just trying to make sure that if there's a call needed down the stretch that West Virginia might get one. Ron Everhart also on that bench with past head oh, coaching yeah. experience. Conversation continues with Bob Huggins and the official right in front of him. 
And again, EKU staying in a zone here. West Virginia, you can pick that zone. Inside to Sherman. Sherman from the blocks, working to the basket. Stifled. Osaboyan, huge rebound. McNeil cannot get that to fall. Osaboyan, another shot. Boy, two, two, he pumps his fist. Osaboyan on these boards. Pumps his arm. Two rebounds on that trip. Curry drives off the window, and Curry gets the finish. Boy, and that could have been a foul on Williams. Would have been five. No call there. 77-72. Mountaineers by five, their biggest lead of the night. EKU needs a shot in a hurry. Here's the guy you want to shoot it. Williams leaves it short, gets oh, it back, though. Oh, my goodness. Dave Osaboyan ran by him after he shot. Moreno turns. And Moreno hits from mid-range to make this a one-possession game again and a timeout called by Eastern Kentucky. New career high at West Virginia for Malik Curry. And Michael Moreno is stepping up big time in the second half for EKU. Well, you're not the uh, preseason player of the year. You know, he's, he's relaxed, he stayed cool and calm, and he knows what needs to be done when his team's in trouble. Boy, bad, bad break for West Virginia, though. You know, Williams missed that shot from the corner and really went nobody there to get the rebound for West Virginia. Gets a second chance, and Marino makes West Virginia pay. There's a reset, plenty of timeouts all around. Both teams in the double bonus. The possession arrow, which could be huge, favoring West Virginia. Eastern Kentucky has held the measure of West Virginia most of the night. 13 threes, shooting over 50% from the field. The West Virginia has managed to grind this one out. And they lead this game by three with 84 seconds on the clock. leading this huddle this time. West Virginia has got it done in the paint tonight, outscoring EKU 34 to 20 there. Now West Virginia leading by three. And how many games do you think you'll end up seeing where Sean McNeil has five points and Jalen Bridges has five? Wow, uh, you know, that, that's, Bridges, that's not a recipe you want to see West Virginia have the whole year. Bridges, one of seven from the field. McNeil, two of ten from the field. Sherman with 27 for West Virginia. Ties his career high. Get out of that corner, Jalen. Oh. Malik Curry has handled things pretty much at the point for West Virginia this half. Ten-second call. Good defense by Eastern Kentucky and Michael Moreno, they might have forced it. Wow. The pressure by EKU for the majority of the evening really, really hadn't bothered West Virginia, but that time. West Virginia wants a foul on Moreno. At the very least, the ball was saying the ball was deflected. 10 seconds to call. Minute 10, EKU can tie him with a three. When they, they have the people that can hit him. Traditionally, Beverly's been good. He struggled tonight. Blanton to tie, and Blanton misses wide. And rebounding not there for EKU. Nobody under the basket. Well, and Blanton's not the one they want to shoot him that. Timeout, Taz Sherman. Curry struggling timeout. at the timeline, almost yes. lost possession. Good timeout for the senior. West Virginia had two timeouts left. That's a good one right there. EKU is out of timeouts. And one left for West Virginia. And as you said, none left for EKU. Coming down to the wire, in a game like this, who has the advantage when you're still trying to figure out your rotations in your roster? And really, both teams try to do that. Yeah, you know, I think right now, you know, West Virginia, even though they have a lot of guys coming in, new guys coming in, 
the five guys that start the game and play the majority for West Virginia are guys who have been here. So you have to think that, that that's an advantage with West Virginia. A.W. Hamilton very high on this team. 24 wins last year. The third most in school history. There's a lot of excitement around this program in Richmond, Kentucky. They call it the most exciting 40 minutes in sports. They've set a school record for most season tickets sold. Well, they're going to be an exciting club to watch. People love that three ball, and if that's what you love, you got the right team if, you, you know, if you're a fan of EKU. In a new league, the A-Sun. Sherman to inbound, finds McNeil. Less than a minute to play. West Virginia by three. Take care of the ball, Malik Curry. Big possession here for West Virginia. Shot clock at 10. Curry drives left hand. Hook and it falls. West Virginia's Curry. lead. 79-74. They made the most of the possession. And a career high for Malik Curry. I'm not sure why play is stopped here. Curry. EKU had no timeouts left. Bob Huggins didn't call one. There's something they want to check on the monitors, and Larry Harrison was asking the same question you were asking, as you see Curry taking it with that left hand. I mean, this is a free timeout for EKU right now. Now they're down five, so but, but still with no timeouts left. I West hope Virginia. we get an explanation from the officials because I have absolutely no idea. West Virginia's been good on seven of their last nine field goals. They were checking the clock to make sure they had. Okay. They're talking about the time, how much time's on the clock. Well, the, the shot clock is a factor here too because you need to make sure there's enough time to run a yeah. shot clock. Well, the clock had gone down to 35 seconds. They put one more second back on the clock, so it's 36. But that's certainly benefit, a benefit of DKU from the standpoint of getting organized here. Their problem is that they're down five, so West Virginia needs a good defensive stop. And Beverly will inbound. Moreno gets it. You have to think EKU's got to get to the basket quick, or do you go for a three here? Yeah, Beverly taking a lot of time getting the ball up the floor. He'll stick the three, and he misses. Ball loose, scooped out. A drive from Beverly, and Beverly can't finish that time. Most of the biggest rebound of the night for West Virginia. EKU's got a foul. Ten seconds, and finally Rob fouls Taz Sherman. Not at all the way. The Colonels needed that final 30 yep. seconds to go. No, not at all. West Virginia with a good defensive stop. And this is after... Gabe the second miss. Yeah, Gabe Osaboyan with his teeth on the rim for that rebound. Beverly missed once, and then Williams flung it out with one hand. And then we saw the drive from Beverly, and that didn't go either. Osaboyan, the rebound of the night. Seven tonight. Here's Sherman at the line, and he misses there. So the fans that stand to put the jackets on might want to sit back down for a minute. <laughs> Johnson and well, West Virginia, Virginia Johnson now, in you don't there. foul. If they hit a shot, they hit a shot, but do not foul. Let them go to the free throw sure. line and get points with no, uh, no time going off the clock. Play good heads up ball, and you should be in good shape. Leads at five with a little over 10 seconds left and a new career best. 28 for Taz Sherman. West Virginia 80, EKU 74. Do not reach, do not foul. EKU looking for threes. They should be at least Williams from the corner. A little strong. Blanton rips it down. And Cruikshank will get one off at the buzzer. It's window dressing. West Virginia holds off EKU 80 to 77. The Mountaineers move to 5 and 1 thanks to a career best 28 points from Taz Sherman. 9.05 for Bob Huggins. Wow. You know, there are no moral victories, but I'm telling you what. Coach Hamilton has to be proud of the way his team came in here and played tonight. I know it's a heartbreaking loss, but my goodness, you know, the Mountaineers had to you know, fight tooth and nail to get this victory. EKU's lead was in double figures halfway through the first half, first half so for yes. a long time in this game, and they had a multiple possession lead deep into the second half.
November 30th. West Virginia, Virginia is looking up, like, looking up a long time at that scoreboard. Going into the final media timeout, West Virginia had led just 231 of this ball game. So they'll win their fifth without even leading more than five minutes of the game. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't matter how many minutes you lead, it matters. And what, what it is, then the double zero or the triple zeros come up. It matters if you lead the final minutes That's right. of the ball game. Country Roads here at the Coliseum. Bob Huggins singing a happy tune tonight for West Virginia. The Mountaineers come away with a win. And let's go to Amanda Maisie. All right, thanks a lot. Taz Sherman, a career high, 28 points. What was working for you out there tonight? I didn't even know I had a career high. But uh, I think I started out trying to find my teammates early, and then uh, I was lagging on a three ball today. I haven't been shooting the greatest from the three lately uh, starting the season. But uh, it was going down today. My teammates was finding me, and I was getting to my spots. So it's all, all thanks to them. How proud are you of your team for responding to a very tough EKU team tonight? Ever since I've been here, we've been resilient. Uh, we never, we, we don't go away. We don't go away. We always say we're going to come back, even though sometimes it might look bleak for us. We know we turn up the energy. We know we can come back, especially with the help of this crowd. Finally, what does a win like this do moving forward, a close win like this? Uh, this is a great, great game. They was make, we played a different team. They was making shots today. Uh, I think they made us better. Uh, now we got to go back to the drawing board and see what we can do differently next time. All right, congratulations. Thanks. Taz Sherman, career high, 28 points. Congratulations. All right, Eric, back to you. Thanks, Amanda. It looked bleak in a few different areas for West Virginia tonight, but a new career best for Taz Sherman. West Virginia holds on to win it. Well, yeah, there's a lot of heroes there. Gabe played a great game. I thought Paulie Cap, a number of guys, really contributed, but obviously Taz is the glue as usual. In front of a big crowd on the Friday after Thanksgiving, West Virginia moves to 5-1 with the 80-77 win. Taz Sherman's 28 points help overcome a hot three-point shooting night for Eastern Kentucky. So now for Amanda Macy and Warren Baker, I'm Aaron.